Okay, so let's get started with Creo Parametric. Uh, we're gonna try to make a part. Well, not a part. We're just gonna stick to sketches in this video, and we'll make a part in next video. That's a 3D part. Um, I'm gonna just explain how to make basic geometries. But before we get to that, uh, when we do projects in Creo, we generally don't make just a part. We generally make assemblies. The end goal is. To make assemblies and analyze the assembly and see if it looks right make sure we can manufacture it and then we manufacture it um, so it's it's nice it's not nice actually it's it's required to have all of that in one folder otherwise assemblies don't work in Creo so we want to have one folder in which we store everything and it would be nice to just save it to that folder by just hitting the save button and uh, not having to select that directory every time and we can do that by going to file manage session set working directory or select working directory mine is selected to these these folders where I'm saving all these videos um, uh, and you can have your setup to be anything really um, and we can begin uh, when we hit new we can bring up the options to start a new assembly part sketch drawing whatever you like or you can just hit control new control n to start a new part uh, right there okay uh, and we'll just start a part it's part part one. Oh, okay uh, that's good this is good to uh, introduce I guess uh, at times Creo will do things that make no sense whatsoever and I want you to know that it's okay you're not going crazy uh, as, as you just saw in the working directory that I showed you there's literally nothing named part 1 and for some reason it won't create this part 1 because you know Creo so let's let's see if Creo is okay with part 2 it's it seems like it's going to be okay fantastic okay so the interface uh, we have a few things here we have the ribbon here this is the ribbon windows ribbon in interface and then we have a uh, tree model tree we can turn on other features we have a uh, layer tree we want model tree we can toggle all these things um, we'll get into them later we can select particular things this this model tree is a very useful little uh, feature to uh, browse through parts when you have larger assemblies with multiple parts it's a nice way to organize things uh, let's look at the ribbon now though. We have the model tab right here the second tab after the file tab uh, Regenerate very handy feature uh, copy delete uh, I don't really know what the use is. I haven't really used this before uh, Haven't really used this get data. This is a very very useful uh, part uh, The uh, very useful area a lot of tools that are very handy when it comes to uh, modeling things uh, again, this is for the 3D stuff. So 2D sketches, 3D parts, and then we have tools to uh, modify those 3D things and make patterns and things of that nature. Um, okay, uh, that's surfacing. We don't really need to get into that stuff yet. Uh, then we go to the second tab, analysis tab. Uh, here we have one tool that is going to be very handy called the measure tool <coughs> and the reason is when we click and see we can measure lengths, distances, diameters, volumes, all these things and you can imagine why that would be very handy in a parametric modeling software where we're dealing with a lot of geometry. Um, never really used this before. Render is something that makes your assembly or part look nice Whenever you see those uh, little uh, touched up pictures of parts in a nice landscape or whatever, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. It's usually because of a tool like this. Um, then we have tools, and here I'll go over this a bit, but this is the actual parametric of uh, parametric modeling. And very few people actually use this, but it's very powerful uh, relations and parameters but we'll get into that later uh, then there's the view tab uh, this is actually a good time to introduce why the view tab is useful uh, if you hold 
if you click and hold the middle mouse button, see you can drag it around and you can move these planes in 3D. Uh, and let's say you accidentally did that and you want to get back to the default orientation, you can go to view, click view again, and you're back to the default. You could hit Control D as this will show right there. Control D to go back to the default, but you know, those are tools. Um, flexible modeling, it's not really something relevant to us. Uh, applications is where you access third party applications or just applications outside of parametric modeling. All right. Um, so let's just make a basic sketch. The way we make a basic sketch is we click sketch. Then uh, Creo will ask us to select a plane. Right now we only have datum planes here, so we can only select datum planes. But know this that even if you have a part, you do not need to create a new datum plane. You can just select the surface of a part, and that can be your new pretend plane to sketch on. Uh, we'll get into that later, but as, and, and keep an eye on this bottom left corner right here. Uh, select a plane or surface to define sketch. See right there, it tells you. You don't have to be constrained or just limited to a plane. You can select surfaces and you can sketch them. Uh, so I'll select this and then I'll hit sketch. And it brings me to the sketch environment. And for me, there's a grid on. I don't know if you can see in this video if it's high quality enough, but there's a grid. And uh, now I guess it's a good time to introduce you to the filters. So these are, let's see if it displays, yep, Sketcher Display Filters. Uh, in here you can turn on and off dimension displays, uh, grids, and remember it only turns off the displays, it doesn't actually get rid of those things. Uh, it's toggled, you can turn it back on, don't be scared if you accidentally turn it off. Um, and while we're at it, uh, remember we click the middle mouse button and we move things around. Uh, if you want to get back to the centered drawing, you hit something right left to the uh, right left to the wow that's that's good English uh, uh, so we got sketch display filters and to the left of this thing we have something called the sketch view and we click it and it's going to center the sketch view uh, it's a really nice handy little click that centers things for you if you're too much in too much of a mess in your modeling or even in assembly uh, it's just a nice thing to go back to uh, so let's let's make a line. We're gonna make a line. We click the line tool right here from the sketching tab. We have a whole bunch of tools, but we're gonna start with line here. We're gonna make a line. We're gonna click and then click again, and that makes a line. But the line tool is selected, so we can make a line again, make a line again, make a line again. You can probably hear the clicks, hopefully, and from that you can follow. This is clearly the Fibonacci sequence that I'm making right here. Uh, I know it's not, it's this one. All right, so that's just, you know, stuff you can do with the line tool. Next, we got the rectangle. Rectangle, click and drag, very simple. Uh, it it kind of hints at how to actually use the tool. Uh, you can see those two dots on the bottom left and the top right. That usually means clicks. So. I'm going to have to have two clicks to make this rectangle. Same thing with this circle, I'm going to need two clicks. With this arc, I'm going to need three clicks and three uh, points, I guess. So let's just make this rectangle again. We have a rectangle. Boom. And we can make a circle. We have a circle. Boom. Click and click. Two clicks. I don't want to exit yet. Uh, so let's make an arc. Uh, we got three points. One. Look at that. Isn't that the best arc you've ever seen? It's, it's oh, 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 where'd it go? Look at that, there we go, okay. So this is actually something I wanna go into a bit more detail. We got center end, and then we got three point. I like the center end because, well, let me just show you. You start with the point, the center point of the arc, and then you select where you wanna start. This is more powerful because I think you have more control over the length of the arc itself and then you can select it versus the first option which is kind of like a three point arc and it's nice if you already know how, how big it's going to be and if you don't want to free ball it. 
I guess it's handy too, but I just like the, uh, I like using the uh, center. It's nice. And then we got Tangent, we got Concentric, and it's Conic, and I'm not going to go over all these things. I'm sure you can figure these out eventually. We got Ellipse. When you click an Ellipse, you make an Ellipse. Very standard. Uh, again, two clicks. Oh, well. Oh, three clicks. Never mind. But uh, as you use these tools more and more, you'll get used to them. One tool I do want to go over in particular is the spline tool. It's a very fun tool to use. Uh, I want to make an S shape like that from this point to this point. And to do that, right here, I selected three points. See right here, we got an S shape going now. It's it's. I, I can't really explain this verbally properly, but it's a very powerful tool. It's kind of like a squiggly thing. Just just mess around with it and you'll see why I like it so much. It's fantastic. Uh, and if you've taken vibrations, you know, hey, look at that, mode two, mode two everywhere. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's a spline tool. You, you click things and from that point on, it's going to contour depending on how you move the cursor around. Uh, actually, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good explanation of it. Uh, that's how this works. Um, and then we can end that contour. Look at that. It's like my Mona Lisa. Uh, it's it's not okay. So that's that's it for now. Uh, we'll get into more serious stuff in the next video, I guess, or I'll try to. Um, Till then, have a nice day. Oh, I'm still on. <laughs>